Um, excited to get season started here with the staff and, and group of players, and uh, you know, to, to have a staff um, and a retention of a staff that I'm uh, super proud to be a part of. Um, not just who these guys are and, and what they stand for, but the chemistry we have together. Um, combined with the experiences we have, you know, not just together on this field, but 340 plus years of games between us, uh, myself and the 10 assistants, and you yeah, had Coach McNeil in there, it goes up dramatically. But uh, it's a group that cares a lot about each other. We talk about our coaching staff. <clears throat> likes to have a good time together, work hard, play hard, and uh, does things for the right reasons. And so I'm excited to start this journey with them. Um, and while it's true that uh, we are a team with a lot of new players, uh, the most I've ever had, I think it's 42 right now, um, it's also one of the closest group of guys I've been around, and, and that's unique. Uh, which really goes back to what our January, when I walked in that team room for the first time and, and felt or saw, I guess, how many new faces there were, uh, that we had a lot of work to do off the field and on the field. And it's really been one of the biggest and most fun challenges I've had uh, outside of a season. Building a team, not just from a talent standpoint, but the chemistry standpoint. We talk about 17 guys coming in from the portal and uh, the high school guys that came in and then the additional guys that have walked on the football team. It's been a fun chemistry experiment is really what it is. You know, it's a lot of different people, a lot of different backgrounds, uh, experiences, failures, successes, and one goal, you know, is to come together as a team and be the best team we can be and be a championship roster. And that's really been our goal since we started this journey is to put together the best group of guys that we can. And I've enjoyed it, you know, and you do that with sweat equity, you know, how hard you work in the off season together going through those challenges. Coach Thunder and his staff do so well uh, through the summer. Um, and then getting to know each other, you know, uh, being really intentional as a head coach about time in the meeting room, not just on football, but about life. And you know, talking about life, talking about things that have happened, talking about hardships, talking about heroes, uh, being very vulnerable with each other and opening up and, and reflecting you know, on things that have happened, things that we can learn from, learning from the past, uh, but being in the present, you know, and taking the guys camping in the woods, bringing in different speakers, all these different things, you know, has, has accumulated into a really fun group to be around. And uh, it's been fun to see them respond and work hard together and embrace what we're trying to do. And we look forward to the season, you know, whatever the, the season is, uh, the obstacles that come, as you guys know, you can never predict all the things you have to face, and, but doing it together. I'm very excited to be in Carter Finley for the opener and uh, thankful uh, to our fans that have bought in and, and uh, they have a sold out season, not just opener. Uh, it says a lot, it says a lot. And uh, really looking forward to that getting these guys in there and, and feeling that environment. And I love you guys for that. It means so much. And uh, student section, can't wait to see our students. And a lot of new students, one of the biggest freshman classes in school history. And so getting them to be a part of what game day is all about. And, you know, I would just say, you know, to our fans that one of the beautiful things about NC State is our Wolfpack uh, mascot, you know, that we are a pack and we're not a singular thing. It's a bunch of individuals, a bunch of people from all over the place that uh, are a family. And game day has turned into entertainment in a lot of ways. All these sporting events you go to, man, they're incredible. And our light show and our fireworks and the flyovers and the jumbotron and the sound system. And that's all true, uh, but it's still a bunch of 18 to 23 year old guys down there work really hard coaching staff that works really hard that are out there trying to do their best to win games and I think the one thing I've learned over time um, is we can have a 12th man we have one of the greatest game day atmospheres uh, when we get that thing going the right direction and just for our fan base and our students and everybody man we need you on your feet at the right times 
Uh, we need you loud in the, the key moments, the you know, third downs when our defense is trying to stop somebody, the red zone when our defense is trying to stop somebody, the celebrations after big plays that we make, and then understanding when our offense is on the field, letting them hear each other. You know, be loud at the right times. And, and uh, yes, it is about entertaining the fans, but it's more entertaining when we win. And so that home field advantage needs to be that. You know, we're, we're not asking for your criticism on game day. We're asking for your support on game day. And, and so, so many times you see, and I go to games too. I go to NFL games and high school games. And man, it's like everybody knows what the coach should be doing. Everybody knows what the players should have done, you know, and, and you don't. Um, and I'm not criticizing you. You're trying to be a fan. Uh, but if you want to help us win, criticize the opponent and support the players and support the coaches and encourage them and allow them to have that backing. And I think that's something we can be better at. And, and I'm so thankful to our fans for the support and, and what they do. But this is, uh, we're riding a wave right now, man. I think one of the coolest things I was able to be a part of was at the men's basketball uh, Elite Eight game in Dallas. I'm in the, I'm in the, the uh, section there where the parents of the men's basketball team were around me and I could just hear them cheering for each other's kids throughout the game. I mean it was so cool to hear DJ Burns' dad screaming at other players in a positive way throughout the game encouraging them and uh, that's what one pack one goal is in my mind. It's a, it's a united mission to win a championship and, and that's everybody. Everybody that works here, everybody that cheers for us and all of us are a part of winning a championship. And, and you all got to feel what that's like. Um, this off season with so many of our sports, so proud of them. And so let's go together into this March of, of four months of football, which could turn into five months of football now. Uh, it's the longest football season in college football history coming up, going all the way into the second academic semester, first time ever. And so it's going to be a lot. And so we ask for everybody to understand that. And it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Um, I'm excited, you know, very excited, you know, to have a football team like we do, a staff like we do, and a fan base like we do. And uh, let's get the stadium rocking. Let's make it really hard for these other teams. And our students, you guys are the heartbeat. You know, you're the pulse uh, of game day. You really are. And so remember that. And get out there and have fun and get those people up. You know, with our football team, um, I love the way that our transfers have integrated into our team. I was worried about that. And we worked really hard to single out the right type of guy. We call them our kind of guys, but uh, guys that fit our, not just our team, but the mantra that we have of, of working. And, uh, I also love how our returners have embraced those guys, and it's really been fun uh, to see what they do, you know, together and, and how they've come in, the older players, and just jumped right in the middle of it. And in some ways enhanced, uh, some things in some ways changed for them. And it's about earning trust, you know, as a coach and, and player to player, player to coach, coach to player. And there's really been, a, you know, open arms in that from all sides. I love the way our captains were voted on. You know, there was a lot of guys on our team that earned votes. Uh, but I, I spoke a lot to the team about what leadership looks like and, you know, having guys that really walk the walk. And uh, we, we got to see a great vision of that last year with Peyton, not just as a football player, but how he stood up for teammates, how he played on the field, how he talked about his teammates and, and all those things. I thought it was incredible to, to be a part of. I'm proud of Davin Van and Grayson McCall, uh, Zeke Carell and Sean Brown for getting the most votes. And, and there's a lot of guys that, that got some. There's a lot of good leadership and you got to see that throughout the off season uh, with guys leading their position groups, you know, with Aiden White and uh, Devin Boykin in the secondary and Caden Fordham and Betty at the linebackers and Jordan Waters. And to see Tim McKay at the offensive line, Anthony Belton, there's so many of them, you know, guys have really developed that way and so that's part of this as a coach because you know leadership is easy when things are good 
as you know, the adversity is going to happen at some point, and that's when the leaders got to be their best for myself down. Um, talk about our first opponent, you know, Western Carolina, uh, seven win team last year. They were the number one offense in seven statistical categories in FCS last season. They did a tremendous job offensively, scored a ton of points. And uh, their quarterback returns, and he's a coach's kid, you know, Cole Gonzalez. I know his father well. Billy's a really good receiver coach. And uh, you can see that Cole's a coach's son. He's a leader. He understands the game. He manages the game. He gets the ball in playmakers' hands. They run a, a very fast, up-tempo system, which you guys see a lot. They get the ball in space to playmakers. And they got a head coach that's a vet. He's coached a lot of places and he's done a great job. He's done a really good job with this program, um, bringing Western Carolina up to where they are. Um, you know, I'm excited to see us play. You know, the, the game obviously is coming quick. And um, game days, were, it, it's a gift. I mean, these kids work really hard. There are 12 guaranteed opportunities to play, which means they're training for, you know, 340 plus days to play 12. And, uh, the games bring out the truth, you know, they're, they're really an uh, opportunity to see where you're at. It's not an indication of where you're going to end up by any means, but that first game tells you a lot. And uh, I've always felt that in college football, pro football, a lot more games are lost than won. Um, Self-inflicted things, and that's something we've worked really hard on as a football program. I don't know if I've ever spent more time on situational football. As you know, the two-minute warning is new to college football. And so all these different things from helmet communication to the sideline tablets to the two-minute warning, you know, really helping our guys be in as many game-like situations where we can go through those steps and be ready for them. And uh, to be the best team that we can be, you know, we have to put a premium on eliminating self-inflicted things. And uh, that's execution and unforced errors. You know, it's really what we're talking about. The things that matter, as you know, and, and uh, it's really been a big thing here, turnover margin and, and explosive plays. And then the pre and post snap penalty piece of the game. Um, and playing really good on special teams. Like those are things that we put a lot of time into. We talk about our roster in general. It's, it's an interesting uh, group of guys you look at the O-line in particular, I think it's the oldest offensive line room I've had. We have seven guys that are grads in there. Four of them are starters. And so they have a lot of college time, a lot of experience under their belt. And uh, I like that. You know, I think that's a, it's really a thinking position. And so it's going to be fun to have that kind of uh, experience there. You know, Coach 2J and uh, Coach and I work really well together with that front, but Anthony Felton uh, had the best training camp he's had. Uh, Anthony Carter really improved himself this offseason. Uh, Zeke Carell comes in, gets voted captain, you know, started 30 games at his previous school and has a chip on his shoulder to finish his career the right way. You know, Tim McKay really worked hard this offseason on things he wants to improve, moved from tackle to guard midseason, and, and uh, now has a body of work that he knows how to work with. And, and then Jacarius Peak, again, who became a starter in the middle of our, our season last year, did a really good job for us. Those five guys will start uh, at quarterback. Obviously, Grayson uh, comes in with a, a wealth of accolades, uh, not only our starter, but a captain. And uh, he's fun to coach. You know, he, he's a football guy. He's uh, got great experience. He's a winner. He's got grit running through his veins. He's tough. Um, and again, another guy with a chip on his shoulder, you know, wasn't recruited at this level out of, out of high school in Charlotte, and now comes in with an opportunity to play against a lot of coaches that didn't recruit him. And uh, it's fun to be a part of that with a guy that's a three-time player of the year in his league. And very humble, you know, very humble guy. Uh, the, the backfield and, and the receiver room, tight end room, all those rooms have really been uh, made over through the portal and through development. But Jordan Waters, uh, excited he's here. Uh, obviously did damage to us a year ago, so it's nice to have him on our sideline. But uh, he's a complete player and does a lot of good things with and without the football. 
Uh, Kendrick Raphael, you know, gained 10 to 12 pounds in the off season and uh, did a nice job improving throughout training camp. Hollywood Smothers, <coughs> really athletic, you know, brings some things to the table back there as a change of pace and a kickoff returner. Does some good things as a receiver out of the backfield. And, and you've heard me talk about Duke Scott. Uh, Duke's going to be a really good back for us. You know, physically he's ahead of the, the curve. And uh, once he gets in these games and starts playing, I think you'll see why we're excited. And Demarcus Jones is, is a utility knife. Jordan Poole, those guys do a lot of things for us. Uh, Justin Jolie, who we actually played against a year ago in the opener. Another guy, I'm glad he's on our sideline. You know, he has a really good fall camp. Uh, presents a, a bigger body that can run and catch. Uh, Juice Farine uh, has improved a ton. You know, really proud of Juice and his growth in the offseason. And those two guys can, you know, take advantage of reps and keep each other fresh. You'll see on the depth chart that our, our big tight end position, Matt McCabe, uh, has really done a good job for us on the edges. He's playing guard, he's playing tackle, he's playing tight end, he can do a lot of things. And then Isaiah Shirley plays both ways for us. You'll still see that with Isaiah. Uh, it's not listed that way, but he will be able to do that still. And then Dante Daniels and Reed Mitchell, uh, those four guys, uh, five guys allow us to do some things in heavier sets uh, in the run game and in protection. And then the overhaul, you know, in the receiver room, you know, I'm proud of Dakari and his development, his growth. He came on towards the end of the season last year and uh, became a bigger target. And he's always been a good blocker for us. And then you add the competition that we added there with Noah Rogers and Wesley Grimes, Keenan Jackson, Terrell Anderson on the outside. They're doing a really good job competing. We'll be able to have a nice rotation. Uh, in the slot, KC and, and Jalen Coy and Jonathan Taylor. So again, another room that has competition in it. And we're going to be able to rotate. We're going to need to be able to rotate, you know, in these games. And now it's just about consistency. You know, you got a lot of guys. And so who's going to be the most consistent performer? And that's what games are about, is finding that out. You know, you have what you think is going to happen coming out of practice. And then what actually happens coming out of games. Sometimes they're the same. Sometimes they're not. But Coach and I and his staff have done a really good job evolving and tweaking our system, looking at our talent and how that's changed and how our offense needs to change based on the talent. What are our strengths? Where can we get better? And I think, you know, he and Rope, uh, Coach Rope are doing a great job with the pass game, he and 2J with the run game. And so Coach and I's oversight and experience and, and uh, his creativity along with those guys, it's fun to be a part of that. Um, on defense, you know, fifth straight year with the same staff led by Tony Gibson and excited for that continuity. And uh, I know those guys uh, have another chip on their shoulder about just the lack of respect maybe they get with losing one player that was so good. And how are they going to make up for that player's loss? There's a lot of guys that want to show that to everybody. You know, on the D-line, it's, it's a pretty similar to group with a few additions. Uh, Davin Van, Trevally. Our starting defensive ends, Brandon Cleveland, our starting nose. And then um, you've seen Noah Potter, you've seen Red Hibbler. Both guys played well for us last year, Isaiah Shirley, towards the end of the year. And then, you know, really happy for DJ Jackson, nose guard. He's been hurt for his entire career at NC State. He's healthy now, had a really good training camp, excited for him. He brings a change of pace in there really quick. And then Chaz Wallace, uh, who we brought in uh, from the portal, is getting better and better. So we've got some depth there. Uh, at linebacker, Sean Brown makes the transition from safety uh, very seamless and uh, brings speed to that position group, toughness. Peyton Fordham had a great camp, but Mike, returning starter, and, and Betty, who's played inside and outside. So got three guys with playing experience there. And then you know, the backups are the guys that we really need to get you know, um, ready with Jalen Parker. Kelvon McBride and Camille Bonner, all three of those guys, uh, have had good camps, gotten a lot of reps at camp, but not game reps. But the safety room really has a lot of change in it. Um, we added in that second portal window to help us with the depth there with Bishop Fitzgerald returning as a starter, Devin Boykin returning, but not being healthy yet. Um, so 
Donovan Kaufman, we call DK, uh, coming in from Auburn as our free safety. Jihad Carter coming in uh, as a nickel uh, from Ohio State. Marcus Cooley, a nickel coming in uh, from Maryland. KJ Martin, um, who can play free and strong. And then Terente Hinton moving from corner to safety. That rim's completely different. And so looking forward to watching those guys play. There's depth uh, at those positions. At corner, I feel really good. Uh, Aiden's in the best place he's been. And, and obviously, he's played well. But he's in a really good place right now. Brandon Cisse uh, can play a lot of positions for us in the back end. He's really a good football player. Corey Coley, uh, another transfer from Maryland, and, and, and uh, Devon Marshall. Those two guys were both experienced players at their previous institutions. So we've got four guys at corner that can play, and then Jackson Vick has really improved. You know, a guy that uh, was hurt on and off last year has really stepped up and improved. That can help us on special teams. And all defenses now are rotations. You know, I mean, you're playing against sometimes 80 to 90 snaps in a game, so you're going to be ro rolling guys in and out of the game. And so we look at you know some of these twos as starters in our heads because they're going to play 20 to 40 snaps based on rotation. And so even though you have a two deep with a starter and a backup, a lot of times you'll see guys playing equal snaps. Um, you know, lastly, the special teams, Canelo Vinaset, really impressed with his consistency, uh, his mental makeup. You know, he's a guy that really does a good job with his routine. He's the same guy every day. He's got a smooth swing. Coach Goebel calls him the Freddie Couples of kickers. <laughs> he's got a really nice leg swing that's consistent that he can repeat and repeat. And he's got good strength. He made a 53-yarder in a scrimmage. Caden um, Newcaster returns, Aiden Arias returns, who snapped in our bowl game. We brought in Jake Mann, who was a snapper at App State last year. And, uh, him and Aiden have had a great competition. You'll see both of them probably in the game. Colin Smith returns. Uh, Colin's been here for a long time as our kickoff guy. And uh, as returners, Jalen Coyd and Casey uh, will be out there in punt, situ punt return situations and in Hollywood. Uh, will be our kickoff returner. So that takes you through the entire lineup. Now I'm going to open it up for any questions. I guess the first thing for you, obviously, Western Carolina being the, the season opener, what do you hope to learn out of this game before you get to Tennessee the following week? Well, I hope to learn a lot. You know, I think there's going to be really good things that come out of the game that we didn't expect, and then there's going to be things we've got to fix. And uh, but how are we going to manage the tempo offense? You know, how are we going to manage things that happen in a game from a negative standpoint? You know, as players, you're not having fans and you know TV and all the things that go on with game day. There, how are they going to handle game day? You know, in general, and then adversity, different than in practice. You know, in practice, you have a penalty or a drop, and it's the next play, you just move on. Well, in the game, there's bigger repercussions mentally sometimes. Can they get to the next play? You know, how do they sustain success? If they're having it, do they relax? Do they keep their foot on the gas? You know, if they're not having it, can they snap back and, and regain it? You know, and what's the leadership like on the sideline in the game? What's the leadership like in the huddles and the locker room? And the impact of the helmet, the impact of the tablets, all that. Like, we haven't been through a full game with all this stuff, you know? And so there's going to be a lot of learning, some on the field, some off the field, I think, that comes out of game one. And, Obviously, we've got a lot of big tests in front of us. So, you know, no matter who we play after the first week, we want to be better and better and better and better as the season goes on. You talked about some guys having a chip on their shoulder on the defense that, you know, because Peyton's not here, somehow the defense isn't going to be as good. Tony's had such a long, successful history of, of I mean, Peyton's one of one, but that the linebackers have been exceptional for a long time yeah. under him. Uh, how have those guys sort of embraced this role of, of uh, chip on their shoulder, Tony Gibson linebackers. Yeah, and I think you know goes back to Isaiah Moore and Drake Thomas and, and Levi, uh, obviously Peyton. It's been a lot of them um, that have played well. Jermaine Pratt, Arius Moore. There's guys that have played really good in our defense this year at that position, and you always want to leave things better than you found them, right? And I think that's it. I mean, these guys want to play as well as they can because the standard of that room and all of our rooms is you want that. You want to leave things better than you found them. 
And so I think as players and as coaches, you know, the not on my watch type of thing that something's going to drop off. But, you know, there's some internal pride about that that guys have. And, you know, when you hear that you can't do something, that's a good motivator. And so I think those guys are, are hearing it or reading it. And I'm excited to see what they can do, you know. And it's their opportunity now. And, and the film is your resume, you know. So when you go out there, it's what you get to do is what you get to show. It's it's really an indicative thing of what you used to talk about and all the things that the linebackers and coach are trying to represent. So I know they're excited to prove themselves and, and take the next step. Is it in college basketball they talk about uh, getting old and then staying old? You mentioned your offensive line, all those graduates dotted up and down the two deep. How important is getting old or staying old in college football now, especially given how long the season is and how much experience yeah, you know, one thing you can't do as a coach is make a guy experienced. You know, I mean, you just can't do that. You play a freshman, he's a freshman. No matter how good he is, that's what he is. And there's going to be some mistakes that come with that youth. And so that is an advantage of bringing in older players. You know, um, to, to staying old, I think, you know, there's two ways to do that. There's the developmental piece of bringing younger players up and growing them like we do. And that's why you see we still had 18 high school signees in that class. And you, know, you want to have a blend of guys that have come in that are in their last year or two and guys that you're going to get to that point as well because they understand. And I think the longevity of being in a program, when you look at some of these guys like the Davin Vans and Sean Browns, uh, Anthony Belt and Tim McKay, guys that have been here a long time, like. Their, their blood's in the bricks here, man. They've been a part of building this thing, and there's there's a lot to that. Like, you do not want it to not go your way because of how much you've invested, you know. And so I think you need a blend of that. Um, and I do think it's okay, you know, to have some young guys playing too. Like, there's some freshness, and you know, obviously KC brought a lot of juice to our offense last year as a young guy, you know. So I think you can have that. You just don't want to be a bunch of that. We had that one year when I had a lot of injuries, and that was tough. This wasn't enough experience out there to guide them. How much has all that experience and all those guys with the blood in the brakes helped you incorporate these new guys and make that transition a little bit easier? It helps a ton. You know, because ultimately it's their team. You know, I, I get the opportunity uh, and the blessing of leading the team, but when they hit that grass, you know, there's nothing I can do for them between the whistles. You know, they, it's their team between the whistles. And when they get in that locker room, it's their team, you know, and there's things that they got to be able to, to manage. And they want this program not just to have standards, they want standards to get elevated, you know. And so they've got to be the caretakers of that. And the guys that have been here the longest, it's their responsibility. It's part of their legacy, you know, to give back to the youth of the football team or the newness that comes in through the portal. With so many new faces this year, and obviously you guys using the portal as much as you did, did you sit down with the coaching staff at the beginning of the year and say, like, we do have a chemistry experiment here. How do we want to do this? And, and in particular, I, I'd, look, I'd be interested in hearing more about your camping trip, the camping trip yeah. that you did. Um, I knew just because of how recruiting was going for us in December with the guys that were calling us as soon as the portal started, that we were going to have something new on our hands. And so um, it just kind of marinated with me for a while. And then when the season ended, I got away a few days and just really put some thought into what I need to do differently coming back because it was going to be a different type of team having that many older players come in. And I told the staff, like, hey, our calendar that we, because I have a 12 month calendar, like, this calendar is going to look different. Um, and here's why. And we got to get these guys closer quick. And we can't just say it. Like, we have to create space for that on the calendar, not just when we're having meetings where we do Real World Wednesday and guys will get up and talk about their lives, but getting them out of their comfort zone, uh, getting them out of the building. And so I had some good help, you know, uh, Jamie Slife, who's a good friend that works with the program, Special Forces, former Special Forces. And I talked a lot about, like, what have you done with other teams? Like, is there a place I can go with these guys? These guys have no idea what it's like to be in the woods at night. How can I get them somewhere and do something really cool with them? 
and it was his idea. Uh, he had been to the Camp Rockfish, which is down near Fayetteville, and uh, it's a huge family camp. They, they do all kinds of different things down there. But they've got 20 plus outdoor um, leadership courses and you know, from climbing walls to flipping tires to whatever, they come up with it. And uh, Jamie had done that, and not with a football team. He'd done it with smaller teams, you know, baseball, softball, things like that. And uh, he thought it would be really cool if we could do that. And so we were able to get Jamie and his team and then our team uh, and then uh, go down there for a night and teach them all kinds of stuff away from football and get them out of their comfort zone and let them sleep in bunk houses with their coaches, by the way. So it wasn't just players out of their comfort zone. I mean, you got, you know, Coach and I sleeping in a bunkhouse with a bunch of players and all this stuff going on. And, you know, the coaches are looking at me like I'm crazy. But I felt like it was something we needed to do, you know, is to give them a unique life experience. And uh, it was phenomenal. You know, we came out of there really as one. Uh, did some interesting things wellness-wise. We've got a really good wellness uh, coach that we've been working with as well that you know, taught the guys breath work and got them in the cold water. We're all in the lake together, a 55-degree lake, and there's guys that were freaking out, you know, and you're in a lake in Fayetteville. Who knows what's in that water with you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, muddy, smelly, <coughs> cold, but just everybody doing the same thing together. And uh, so it was really good. Uh, I think we did it right towards the end of spring ball. It was just a good way to kind of bring them together before spring ball ended and then we, you know, get ready for the summer program. But, you know, coming out of December, I just felt like nothing was off limits when it came to how we need to get these guys closer. And um, that's one of the things I like to do. I like to do things differently. I don't, you know, just because it worked doesn't mean it's best. Your, your ingredients on a football team are completely different every year. Hey, David, a bit, a bit, you're, you're 12 for you, kind of coach. <clears throat> what are you most proud of that you, you have, as a coach have accomplished from the time you got here to, to where we are now? You know, I think just the consistency, um, the environment that we have for, for these guys, it's, it's, uh, it's what I hoped it would be. Obviously, we want to have a uh, championship trophy in that house with us too. But it's a place where guys can be themselves. It's a, a place where you know you teach respect and uh, it's a family environment. And I don't just say that because coaches say it, it is. I mean, people genuinely love each other in that building. Um, we have incredible people working in there. Like, and you go from one part department to the next department, I don't care if you're talking about nutrition or talking about uh, mental health, talking about the training staff, talking about the strength coaches, whoever it is, our op operations department, uh, our recruiting department, our graphics department, you name it, you know. Uh, we have incredibly talented, good people around. And I'm proud of that, you know, uh, because those are all the people that I've been able uh, to hire and retain and thankful that I've had the ability to do that with Bruce's help. Because uh, it's not, it hasn't always been that way, you know. Sometimes you're in there like, man, I wish we could do better than this. But we got some great people. And so I get to come to work today and be surrounded, you know, by guys I look forward to being around. And not just guys, you know. I mean, it's it's a team of everybody's in there. And so, yeah, I'm very blessed to have the staff that I do. Coach, a bit digging back off this question on a technical level, obviously you mentioned all the new transfers you have, the majority of the offense actually being brand new people. What's it been like for you, Coach and I, and the offensive staff in terms of making a new offense that incorporates all these new transfers, not only just the players themselves, but kind of their play style compared to last year? It's been a process. You know, I think you know, every time you go to practice, sometimes things get uncovered about what a guy can do. Because sometimes it takes a player a while to show you what he's really good at might just be thinking too much or they're not in good enough shape yet to really expose what they can and can't do. Um, but it's a process and that's one of the strengths that Coach and I has. You know, he's, he's very, very pliable when it comes to moving things around and adjusting from routes to blocking schemes to formations to motions. He's done a lot in his career and so he can adjust pretty quickly. 
but it's been a fun process too, you know, because obviously the offense ran through our slot last year for obvious reason why. He's really, really talented and he can do things with the football. And now it's keeping that in the offense and, you know, what else is going to happen with Jordan Waters, with Noah, with Tapari and all these things, Justin Jolie. Um, so yeah, it's been fun to watch and it's going to continue to evolve. Like game one, we're going to come out of that game with some insight. And then we got to tweak and, and change things a little bit for the next one and then continue and continue. I think you saw a really good visual of that last season. You know, we were completely different in the first half than we were in the second half offensively, not just production, but systematically. What's it been like for you to watch the development of Matt McCabe, you know, the last three to four years and yeah, being that proud guy? Yeah, Matt. You know, he's, he's put on probably 70 pounds of really good weight. Uh, works really hard, earned a scholarship, and now he's starting, you know, for us at tight end. And, and he's also, you know, one of the primary backups inside. If something would happen, he could go play guard. And so really proud of him. It's a great story. And I think a year from now, if we don't have walk-ons, if that ends up being real, like that'll be a story you point to as what we're losing in college football or those kind of stories. Um, but yeah, couldn't say enough good things about him. I'm really excited for him. I told him that yesterday. I'm like, he worked really hard, and I can't wait to see what you do. You know, and he's really excited. And how important, yeah. how important is that kind of position, like him or Isaiah Shirley or you know Jacarius Peak? I think that a bit last year of being able to play, you know, tight end, but also be able to do something else if needed. Well, it gives somebody a role that's kind of a sixth man for you on the O line. Sometimes it also uh, opens up some run game. You know. I think when you have a, a blocking tight end like that that can also run, like Isaiah was a tight end in high school, he can catch the football, like he's not just a guy that can block, you know, and so it, it opens up run game, play actions, uh, gives you a, a really physical three or four man surface. Sometimes it can get softer and that's the opposite of what we want it to be. We want to be able to be really physical at the point of attack when we have those guys in the game. And, they can play on on the ball, they can play off the ball. So it just adds things in the run game, which are really important, you know, when it comes to sustaining drives and short yardage or four minute situations. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited um, that we have the ability to expand and contract. You know what I mean? Like we can get five really fast dudes out there in a heartbeat and we can get really physical and big in a heartbeat. And, and so I like that. With you. Freshman receivers on the step chart. You got to see what they did in high school. What's the process been like? And for who? The three freshman receivers for us, oh. and Johnson. Obviously, Johnson came in a little later than the other two, but what's it been like to see like their process during fall camp and the ups and downs and the exciting things that they can do? Yeah, you know, all of them are gifted. Um, the thing I like is how coachable they are, how hard they work. You know, Keenan uh, started fast in the spring and then was out for a while with the you know soft tissue deal. He probably of the three was the best in fall camp. He was consistent all the way through. Really did a good job this summer getting himself healthy. Uh, Terrell had the best spring I think of the the guys and uh, started camp a little banged up and then just coming on here uh, the last week or so and then Taylor wasn't here in the spring so like. His first week was like, oh my gosh, you know, like this is what college football is about. He was so out of shape football wise, fast, but you know, the stamina that you need. So he's learning, but each day he's out there, he's a really coachable guy. He's a really hard worker. He's getting better. And uh, all of them, upside, really good. David, Zeke Carell's get a captain. He's a guy who's a transfer and missed spring practice because of an injury. Mm -hmm. Yet every single, I think every single player I've talked to in the past few months has mentioned his name at some point. What has he done to sort of ingrain himself with the, the program to that level without actually being on the field for such a good part of it? That's impressive, right? Uh, I think first thing he did in the spring was learn how to lead from the back. When you're not on the field, it's hard. And so he was an encourager. You know, he was a guy that was in the meeting room talking to guys. He's played a lot of football, and so he immediately gets this guy has played in 30 games, uh, he's going to have respect because of that. But the way he went about trying to help people and then encourage people, and then when he was able to go, how hard he goes, uh, how consistent he is, the type of person he is, how he carries himself. But he's earned it all, you know? I mean, it wasn't like we brought him in and said, here's your center, vote for him, you know? I mean, he's earned it all. And 
Oh, I, I, same thing. I don't know that I've ever seen a transfer miss portion of the year, especially right when they get there and get that kind of recognition. It's pretty cool. You said Great. Anthony Belton has had the best ball camp of his career here. Yeah. And what have you seen out of him that separates that? You know, uh, he's in really good shape. His practice habits uh, have become escalated as far as the urgency and the focus. Anthony likes to have fun. He's got a great personality, and sometimes that gets too close to the game for him. I think, you know, being able to compartmentalize those things and this is work, this is fun, and no one win. It's time to do both. He's really grown up. He's had a really good fall camp, and uh, I'm excited for him. Really excited. Like, he's playing good football right now. The last five years or so, you've had anywhere between, I don't know, 68, 75 in-state players, um, and you've been able to retain a lot of them year over year. Why is that such a big deal to have those guys in this program? Uh, you know, when I came up in the sport at other schools I've worked at and won championships at some of them and helped them build programs, when I looked at those programs, uh, they were all heavily tilted to in-state. And so I don't know exactly why, but I think in my opinion, it's because they live where they work and uh, they have to go home to their hometowns and they have to talk about their school, you know? And there's a lot more people in those towns that want to follow them. And so when they get back, it's, hey man, you guys beat every team in your state or hey, you guys had a great season. Uh, I'm not saying it's pressure, it's just reality. You know, when, when you're from here and you play here, it's different than when you go away. They don't forget who you are as a person, but they may not follow you, and it's probably not near and dear to them how your team's doing. They just wish you well, you know. You're playing for a lot of people when you played NC State. It's the largest alumni base in the state. It's a lot of people, and they care. And so there's that factor it was that way, you know, at Montana, it was that way at Kansas, it was that way at Wisconsin. I mean, those people in the communities cared. And I think when you get players from there, and, and to why they don't transfer as much, because their families are closer, you know. There's a value to that quality of life you get when you can see whoever that is in your family that's your person. Uh, you see them more often, you know, and that helps you in this challenging window of time as a student athlete, because it is. It is challenging. It's a huge, huge window of pressure and, and having those people that love them the most close by and then they got to move away. I guess probably why you saw so many kids come back home that left our state and transferred here because they missed that connection at home when they weren't playing in their own state. A couple Dave, more questions. Okay. Dave, for those first 11 years, if not all of them, there's been a monster in the ACC, whether it's Florida State or Clemson look out of the landscape of the expanded league now, do you see a monster in your way? I don't even think about it like that, you know. Um, I think the thing that we've done over time uh, here is is be able to beat everyone we've played on the schedule at some point in time. There used to be a time where you'd look up and they hadn't beaten this team in 10 years, they hadn't beaten it, and that doesn't happen here anymore. We can beat anybody on our schedule, and our kids believe that, and so there's a belief um, I don't know because I really don't study everybody that we don't play and there's some good teams we're not playing to this year but I don't look at it that way as much as I look at what are we going to be you know and I hope that we're a monster for people I really do um, time will tell and hope we're a good monster that way we're not you know hurting ourselves along the way but that's why we play the games. How does heaven the teams that you're not playing this year, do you feel like that makes the opportunity this year that much greater? It could. Uh, again, these are preseason rankings, you know, and this is when everybody's teams are pretty much healthy. And so, as you know, who's good today may not be who's good later in the year. And so we're basing that on what people think of us, not what really is going to be on the field against us. So yeah, and you guys know me well enough to know that I'm not going to base the strength of our schedule on where we're ranked in the preseason or where they're ranked. We'll see. 
Now, when you get to these teams at the end of the year, and when we get to the end of the year, you know, that's where you're going to find out how good they are. I, I wish they'd get rid of preseason rankings, personally. And, you know, start ranking teams midway through the year when they've earned who they are. I know that wouldn't be good for you guys because you'd have nothing to talk about probably, but I mean, it's a lot of, you know, false stuff. How does having the two minute warning this year change the way you manage a game at the end of the game? You got an extra time out, you know, um, and plays that could happen going into the two minutes could be different because there's going to be a stoppage there. Like you might have a team that just throws the ball and passed and now they're going to run the football because there's 210 on the clock and it's going to stop. You don't have to get a play that goes out of bounds. You're going to see things like that. You, you might use a timeout earlier in the half that maybe you wouldn't have because you wanted it later knowing that you're getting an extra stoppage towards the end, you know? And uh, it's going to be interesting because, I mean, I did a lot with that in February until the end of this training camp. We did a lot of what ifs around the two minutes and how that impacts the team trying to get the ball back that's down and trying to get the ball back for your offense and how much time there would be. It used to be if there was 240 on the clock with no timeouts, you could kneel it out, game over. Now it's got to have a first down with two minutes on the clock, right? And so your game ending play calling is now different you know, for both sides, understanding that. So there's going to be some really good management of that and there's going to be some mismanagement of that based on you know the work people have put in. How about the player responding to that two minute warning? Because the end of the game can be, regardless if you're up or you're down, the end of the game can be very anxiety inducing, full adrenaline. We have that two yeah. warning. We've practiced it a lot. And so, what I told them is, I'm going to get you in these uh, clutch situations a lot um, and uh, unusual situations a lot. So, when we end up in them, it's not unusual. And so, you're comfortable. So we've done a lot. I mean, we started practicing two minute on the second day of training camp with the offense and defense. And, and so we've had, you know, three weeks of work, putting them in all kinds of what we call situation of the day work, where they can get out there at the end of a half or end of the game and go through a scenario and uh, be ready for it in real time. All right. One more. Uh, one more. Uh, sorry, I, I don't know if this is an off limits topic, but it's something I always just thought of and I wanted to ask you fit for the last question. Obviously last year you had the uh, amazing viral clap back that I thought was super sick uh, after one of the games at some media members. Um, so I just wanted to ask, funny enough, obviously basketball ended up having some of their best seasons ever. So I just didn't know if it came across your mind. I wanted to know how excited are you to get this season started and really show how this football program has been built with you being here for so long? and obviously with you guys having such an underdog mindset for so long, being able to really go out there with this brand new team and show like, hey, this is what we're about and this is what we're ready to do with the new era of college football playoffs as well. Yeah, I'm excited for the college football playoffs. Um, when I was coach at Montana, we, we played in the FCS playoffs two years in a row and it's, man, it's fun. It's really cool being in a bigger playoff like that. So I'm really excited just for sports in general to have a college football playoff and excited to get on the field with our team. And last year has nothing to do with this year. Every year you got to go out there and prove who you are. And last year I had some opportunities to stand up for our team and I did and I'll continue to do that. I mean, that's my job. That's what I feel like my job is, is to stand up for our football team. And I have no problem doing that. And. Uh, Maybe those comments were good, maybe they weren't, but they were comments that I felt were the right things to do at the time. It's funny, I think I get more popularity out of the stupid stuff I say <laughs> more than some of the good things that I do, but it's all good. Um, I love this football team, just like I love the last one. Each kid on that team is important to me, and they work hard for our staff, our school. And we're gonna get on that grass together and do the best we can. And whatever that looks like, it looks like. But it's going to be a fun season. These kids are into it, man. It's it's a good vibe in that locker room right now. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good Thanks, day. Dude.